Number 11, our tunnel of trees. So let's talk about how we selected this blueprint to go with this chipboard. Um, quite simply, I just knew this was super big. It fills up most of the actual layout and I wanted to make sure, actually it goes this way, sorry. I wanted to make sure that I um, had something that um, I could take the place of. And I thought, this is beautiful, I love it. Instead of having flags all the way around it, we're only gonna put the flags on the actual ring part. We're not gonna put the flags where the flowers are. The, the flowers should be covered with white and the, um, Ring should be left empty for your photo, and then the flags are glued to the outer edge. But <clears throat> when I was doing the big chippy for this, this is actually a July 2012 original layout that I'm bringing back, and you're gonna need an eight by 10 photo in order to fill this space. And um, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room for it, and this does do that. Now on this layout, there is actually no white paper um, that goes on top of these mats. You shouldn't do that. Or wait, you should do that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Don't listen to me. It does have the white mat. I'm sorry. The white mat does not go in here. It only goes in the flowers and the leaves. Okay. Don't put it inside where the photo should be. There's no reason for that. And then, so let's talk about some of the other stuff that we're gonna do, how we put these flags on, how we use our chipboard, and I've got a trick with the background paper also. All right, ladies, we're here with the number um, 11 tunnel of trees, and we've got a little scrapbooking magic that needs to happen with this background paper. So on this layout, <clears throat> I have a lot of the background paper covered up. So I wanted it to be super simple. I love the creamy color of the wood, but I didn't want these flowers. So what I did is cut the paper. You know, it would be really distracting if these flowers were down here. So I wanted to make sure this was all left very simple. So what we're gonna do is if I'm looking at my layout, I've got about four inches, that's another inch, that's five, six, seven. I have seven inches that I'm gonna cut from the bottom of this paper and I'm gonna turn it around and glue it a little bit differently. So as you can see here, you can't even tell that this paper ever had flowers because what's gonna happen is they're eventually gonna be right here and you'll never know that they ever existed. So if you ever find yourself buying paper with borders or some big something or another, this is something you could do. Figure out how you can make a little bit of scrapbooking magic so that you never see that um, was ever there, okay? So let's remove this, get out our trimmer. <clears throat> Always cut off your skews. Now I know a lot of people just actually, um, you know, like cut the skews off right to this line. I would never do that. The paper is never the same size as it says it is. So I always measure 12 inches and then cut. I don't cut just because that's where the skew is. Some papers are even short 12 inches. So, all right, skews are off. So now I have this flower. I'm gonna measure seven inches. And when I measure, I don't bring it over the line, I bring it right to it. So seven inches, I'm gonna set those two pieces aside, grab my next piece of paper, measure seven inches. Okay, we're gonna grab them again, and we're also gonna get our scotch tape out. Handy dandy scotch tape. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue it back together just like that, all right? So make sure you have it set up the way you want it, and then flip it over. When I'm using the tape, I like to, you know, make sure it's really lined up. <laughs> I like to get a little cat hair involved too because that seems how it works at my house. And I do the ends, and then I do the whole middle. Okay, there's that. Now let's do the other one. Needs to be glued just like this. All 
There's this end. That end. And now a 12 inch piece pretty much in the center. All right, and now I've got my new background paper. So that's what I want right there. Now I'm gonna take the strips that I have and I'm going to put those on. But I'm gonna put this one first right at the cut line and then this one. Now before I do that, I wanna make sure my scrapbooking magic is right and I don't need to flip this around or turn it because I have one flag that's about four inches that's gonna go right here. So let me just confirm. Here's my ruler. And yeah, that is perfect. So let's take the smallest strip. I've already got these inked for myself so that I was ready to go for you guys. <clears throat> let's make sure we're all in focus and we are. I'm gonna glue it right along the cut line, just like that. The flowers with the black underneath. Uh-oh, guess what? I just ran out of adhesive. Let me get a different one. There we go. Glue this one stacked right underneath there. And that is it. You'll never know those flowers ever existed, okay? So let's finish up this page. Some lucky customer is going to get this kit half finished. So there is a little bit of scrapbooking magic, and now we can go on to our next part, which is talking about our um, chipboard, our big chippy here. So let's remove this so we don't get it dirty. And I think I'm gonna have to pull out a piece of white paper too. I forgot to do that out of the kit. So let me grab the kit. You guys have a sheet of white in there that you need. Okay. So scrap paper, because the first thing we're going to do is ink this guy and our words. And we also have to get the negative pieces out. Getting the negative pieces is not that big of a deal. If you just start tapping the chipboard, a lot of them fall out. And what doesn't will either push through unless you need, they're a little bit small, then you can just push up, use a pair of scissors to do that. Okay. Now for this chipboard too, there is a cut side. And the way that I know what the cut side is, is I can see the little bit of laser charring, but I didn't, I wanted my flowers on the left hand side. So it doesn't matter, you can cover that up I flipped it over and we're gonna use this side of the chipboard. So get your vintage photo ink out, because that's what you need. You should be using a dauber with any of these chipboards. The pieces are pretty delicate and this is actually much faster than um, doing the sponge. Use your sponge for your photo mats and your paper and keep your dauber just for your chipboard only. If you don't have a dauber, you can get one because we do sell them. And then you can buy the refill ink, never throw your dauber away, no matter what kind you have. Cause you just pop that top off and you fill it right back up. So I'm super inspired by the chipboard. I am loving the big chippy that we're doing right now and the layouts. Actually, the layouts, that's something that I really enjoy um, is reusing them. I cannot stress enough, once you have a blueprint, you have it forever. You can use it over and over and over again. Um, and nobody ever notices and that you use it again as long as it's not the same layout one after the other. 
So all the layouts in September's are revisions, ones we've already done. Okay, so once we've got that done, let's not put it away. Let's grab our words, might as well do everything at once. Now, Tunnel of Trees, if you do not go to the Tunnel of Trees, which is on the other side of the state, well, that's okay. We do take road trips. Um, we do um, have a scenic drive, breathtaking views, color, forest, curly, curvy, I'm sorry, roads, you know, fall. So you just don't use the words that don't apply. No big deal. Okay, that is good. We're gonna set that aside. <clears throat> or you know what, while I'm thinking about it, let's just get this one out of the way. So let's teach you for all my newbies how to get out this um, chipboard. The chipboard is only attached at the bottom of the letters. It is not attached at the top. That's why they normally pop kind of out of there just like that. You can see the top is loose, okay? So when you're doing this, you're cutting away so that the word falls out. So I like to cut away at the top or the side of it. Okay, and then it just falls out of there. And then from there, I could cut away more and that goes away. And once I feel like it can just be bent down, I do. If not, I trim it where it's connected, okay? So there's the word fall. I'm gonna do the word view. There's lots of videos showing you how to do this. So you can look at many different ones. All of September has a video showing you how to do this if it has words. So there's the views. One more. We'll do forest. Don't want to do this one because it's individual. And this is going to be somebody's kit. Somebody's going to get lucky enough to have some of this work done for them. So let's not lose anything. All right, that's coming apart. Pop it out. And there we go, guys. So let me set that on the side. Get this covered. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the next step of this layout, which is our ring. So the ring has to have the flags and it also has to have um, the flowers covered. I don't want to see the photo here. I only want to see it around the edge of this. So we need to cover up all of this flowers and the white pieces here. So you have a scrap, you have a piece of paper that one sheet anyways, that you're using for the mats and you're using for this. So make sure you cut your mats out first so that we use only scraps to fill this in, okay? So I'm gonna do that for whoever gets this. So my, every time I'm cutting, I'm always looking for my biggest measurement, but my smallest piece. And since they're squares, this is pretty easy because they're all exactly the same size. They're three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So that's what I'm gonna cut because this is your top mat. One, two, three, and here's a piece of scrap that I can use to fill in somewhere. And then two more. Three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So let me set these aside for whoever's kit this is, and then these are the pieces that we're gonna be using to fill in the white. So I've got the big flowers. Those are definitely ones I want to make sure happen first, that kind of thing. And when I do these, I like to put adhesive on the back side. We're going to fill in the flower, fill in the leaf. I'm putting adhesive on the whole thing so it sticks pretty well. That's good right now. Now I need to get rid of all of this. If you have a pair of Teflon scissors, that works best so that the adhesive isn't sticking to your scissors. Let me make sure I'm in the frame here, cutting away. 
Try to get the scissors underneath the chipboard a bit. It's not gonna look pretty. Doesn't need to. So these are pretty sharp angles. So I've got a little bit that I got left over there, so I'll go back and clean that up. Let me get some of this chunky stuff out so I can maneuver better. Oops. That's good. Now I got a little piece that I cut into right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive right there and I'm gonna cut myself a sliver. And I'm gonna put it on there. And you won't even be able to notice. As long as there's no shadows, you won't notice at all. All right, so let's get underneath here and keep going. I'm gonna get rid of this. It's pretty hard to work with. This leaf is gonna stay white. Ooh, I just ripped it. All right, let's get rid of that. It's just hard for me to work with. And then we can go back and nip away at it. Okay, so, so far so good. I need to get that out. And then fill in the rest. And you could have did this with the color if you wanted to, but I was really trying to keep my page really uh, void of any color because it'll just be so good when you put those beautiful fall leaf pictures on there because that will be really where all your color comes from. Okay. So now you've seen how that's done. You really should go and do these pieces too. That would be your next to do all the small pieces. <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep going. And you can use all these little crazy snippets if they work. Pull this back. Perfect. Okay, let's fill those in. Those are such a weird shape. Like there's all these little crazy pieces that I could use instead of trying to do a whole square. That's too small for that one, but it works. 
right there. This one works here. I'm gonna cut a little chunk. Voila. Now we've got that. Now we're gonna turn it over and fix it. Okay, get rid of a couple more pieces and then I think we're good to go. We'll start the next step. Somebody else can finish this whole thing. I have done enough work for them already. Okay. Brilliant. So let's get rid of this. So this is how mine is gonna sit on there. Now, if you have a few little edges that are a little bit rough, you can always take your, um, or you know, you can see a little bit of the white, you can take and just rub that along the edge, but really it's not gonna notice once you have the picture in there, it'll be no big deal. So on this blueprint, it shows the flags going all the way around. So let's talk about the flags and how we actually um, do those. It says one by two rectangle, and that's exactly what they are. So here they are here. I did a few of them and had them ready for us. But for those of you, I get a lot of questions about how I do the little notches, so I'm gonna show you. So I've got three pieces right here that are one by um, two. I'm gonna lay them on top of each other, and I'm gonna cut halfway in, and I'm gonna cut halfway in. And that's it, there's no magic to these. Sometimes I cut over, but once it's inked and it's all put together, you can't even tell. It's not, you know, that big of a deal. So I normally cut a few at the same time. Let me try to get that up, there we go. All right, here we go. And I'm gonna start right down here for um, my first layer. So right here is where we start. I don't put anything in here, it's right there. I'm gonna take my adhesive and I'm gonna put some adhesive right on the back of it because that's exactly where we are gluing this is right here. So my polka dotted piece is my first layer and then my second layer right here is white. You gotta keep making these go around and then polka dot again, like that. And then I have this one. Okay, so that right there is the first layer, right? And um, hmm, looks like this might be pretty long if we do that. And it is pretty long. Hmm. We're gonna stop for one second because I feel like those are gonna be too big. We're gonna move them in. Even though the sketch calls for that, the ring is so big that if we use it that way, it won't work. So we're actually gonna keep with the same concept, but we're gonna do them shorter about like this. This is your first layer and you should see about an inch of them. And then go ahead and trim this off unless you have a photo in there. If you have the photo in there, then the photo will be covering it up, okay? 
That's it, just like that. That is about as big as it needs to be. Otherwise, this thing's gonna be too big for the page. It works okay with my sketch, but it won't work with this because this ring is so much bigger than what we used. So then the next layer is gonna go underneath. So we're gonna take the adhesive and just roll a little bit through there. And I've got my, and this one actually can go right to the edge. So you don't even see it. So that, and then I have a white, like this. And then I have a stripe. Such a fun and simple thing to do with the flags. And then I have a polka dot. Okay, and you're just gonna keep working your way around. Now I would do your whole first layer first, trim that excess off if you don't have a photo, and then go and do the bottom layer, okay? So that's it, ladies. That is how we're going to do this whole layout with our flags and our photo for fall. Hope it helps.